Well, welcome back to RDWorks Learning Lab. Um, today we're going to recap on something that I did in session 22, which was a mode burn. The method that I used there raised a couple of questions um, from one of the watchers. I was a little bit puzzled by the questions because one I believe was a genuine question and the other one was maybe questioning whether I was doing it the right way. I have no problem with that because I keep telling everybody I'm learning as well and what you're doing is you're following in my footsteps and just, and seeing me discover things. In trying to answer his question all of a sudden I had a light bulb moment and I realized that maybe I could make that mode burn test very very simple. I couldn't find any way of programming zero speed into the machine to keep the axis still and the only thing that I could do was to bolt this bracket to the head so that my block of acrylic and the head remained relatively fixed to each other, even though the axis was moving at one millimeter per second. Now, like any good murder story, I'm not actually going to reveal who the murderer is until the end of this session. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off by writing a program and then hopefully you might be able to discover what's going on before we get to the last page. So today we're going to draw a very simple program using some of the things that you're already familiar with. We're going to start off with a line and we'll just draw a vertical line with our control key. Any length, anywhere. We're also going to draw a horizontal line any length, anywhere. And now we're going to put a marquee around the vertical line and we're going to set that to six millimeters long. We'll set the horizontal line to eight millimeters long. So we'll just move this to a convenient position. Look, we've got two dimensions up here. It doesn't matter where they are. We'll make this X say 50 millimeters and we'll make the Y 50 millimeters as well. And there we go. Look, we've moved it to the center of that line is on 50 50. I know that I haven't played with this little tool up here, but this little tool up here can be quite useful at times, especially like this when we're going to be moving things around. If you move that black dot to top left hand corner and say OK, the dot hasn't actually moved here, but remember we had that set on a center of 50-50. If we take a look where it is now, you'll notice that it is 47 in Y and 50 in X. So this little tool here allows us to move the reference handle for an object. Now the reference handle here was dimensioned on the center point, but now the reference handle is on the top corner there. So what I can do is to change this dimension now from 47 to 50. And there we go. So now you can clearly see that 50 is this top corner. So what I'm going to do now, I want that corner, I want that top left hand corner there to join up with this top left hand corner here. Well we know that this corner here is on 50-50 so all we've really got to do is just change the coordinates for that line to 50. And 50 in X and Y. And there we go, they jump together. So they're perfectly lined up now. So what I'm now going to do is make a copy of that line. And easy way to do that is Control C on your keyboard. And then we'll put our arrow roughly here and we'll do control V and there we go we've got another line there now and if we put our handles on it we know that this one is at this end here is at 58. It's a tedious way of joining lines together as opposed to having snaps which I'm used to in my CAD system. It's crude but it works. I want another horizontal line so the best thing to do is to copy that one control C pop it down nearly where we want it down here control V 
and there it is. We'll put a handle on it and that tells us more or less where we're going to be. We need to be 58 in X, 56 in Y. So something that I'm fairly familiar with in my CAD system but I haven't used in this package is the matrix tool which is down here. So first of all we'll put a marquee round here and secondly we'll bring up the matrix tool. I would expect to be able to put a pitch and a number in here. This is slightly different so if you're using a, using a CAD system be very careful. I need four of these but it doesn't say pitch here it says X space. Now that means the space between these pictures and the space is actually zero when I want it to join onto there. I don't want anything in Y so I'll turn that to zero and now I'll say OK and there we go we've got four copies in total. So I need one more line um, control copy and we'll put it roughly where we, we need it which is about there control V oh bearing in mind it's this end here so that's going to be 42 and it's going to be 56 in Y and there we go so there's the program right, we're going to leave that line black and we're going to make that one there blue and then we make all these verticals different colors so that vertical will be red it will be brown and this one will be an olive green now that brings us to another very interesting point and that is I've run out of space here in my work area as you can see I've just about managed to get the olive green on the bottom there there is no mechanism if I use any more colors for running up and down this list you know there's no scrolling up and down a list so if I put colors down the bottom here I can't see what I've got it, it's a nightmare so just be careful when you come to fill this list up unless somebody can find a way of rolling around this list then you know I can't right so now we're going to fill the details into our program now all these horizontal lines are black lines so to save time I've preset these but just run through them these horizontal traverse lengths are 8 millimeters long so if I set this speed to about 10 millimeters per second it will take almost a second to jump between the cuts because they are traverse cuts I don't want them to actually fire the laser so I've set the laser power right down at 1% and the laser through mode has been switched off on all of these. Okay, so the next one is the blue cut. And again, we need to make sure that the traverse speed on that one is set to one millimeter per second because the blue cut is six millimeters vertically and six millimeters at one millimeter per second should give me a six second mode burn. And the power well I know that the machine won't operate at 10% so I've set this first test at 15% and the laser through mode is off. We go down to the red one and the speed has got to be set again to one millimeter per second and 20% power no through mode and finally 80% power one millimeter per second okay so there's our program written not quite we don't know the order in which this thing is going to work so we have to make sure that we decide how it's going to run now I want it to run from the left to the right let's put a handle around this cut optimize if we were to do order of layer then this thing would get very confused because it would only do one black and then it would work its way down blue, red, green. I'm going to use this block handle this time and I'm going to use the direction left to right that that may well give me the program that I want. And we'll take it to the machine and show you how it works. 
Okay, now I'm just going to remove the lens. Um, and somebody asked me why I removed the lens to do this particular test. And the answer is fairly simple, actually. When it comes out the back of the machine, the laser beam is about six millimetres diameter, about, about like that. And it comes out as a, as a collimated beam, which doesn't tend to diverge. And it stays just like a piece of pipe, invisible all the way across here and down. And when it comes out the end there now, it's still basically the same beam that came out the back of the laser. Right, this time the setup is very simple. So it really doesn't matter where this is in relation to there, except we don't want it too close because any fumes that are generated here are likely to go up and contaminate the mirror. Make sure there's nothing in the way because we're going to just start the machine up and the machine is going to go to a reset zero zero position. Like that. Okay, now it's set to a nominal origin where the last time I used it. Um, but what I'm going to do now is something you wouldn't normally do. Over in the back right hand corner of the machine, we've got a plug up here, which is basically the control for this Y axis this way. What I'm going to do is to carefully, just as simply as possible, just pull it straight out quickly and cleanly. What that means now is I can move this y-axis wherever I want and it's not going to be controlled by the program. The program thinks it's moving the y-axis but in fact it won't move at all. But x-axis will still continue to move. Okay now I'm going to set the center line of the beam up on the edge of this block because the first thing that's going to happen we get 10 millimeters of motion before we do the first cut. And I'm going to set in the other direction, I'm going to set the center line approximately maybe six or eight millimeters in from the edge of the block. And we're ready to run. So let's put some blow in that area. That's 10%, nothing happening. 20%, that's 40%, that's 50%, Sixty percent. This is seventy percent. And that's eighty percent. Wow. So I've put this up against the light so you can see it in profile. But we can clearly see the same sort of pattern as we had before. Ten percent should be here. 20%, 30%, 40%, 50 50%, 60% and when we get to 70 and 80% we're actually dropping off. So 60, 65% is the maximum I set the machine to and that's the reason why because I'm running out of power after 65%. So there's a nice simple way of uh, benchmarking your machine. Much simpler than method one before you attempt to reconnect your y-axis, turn your machine off. It's reasonably safe to disconnect it, but I would never disconnect, I would never reconnect with power on.